Hello. A blessed morning to everyone. Welcome to the third day of our missions month. Shall we all stand as we sing praises to our God? Let us sing the song, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. It is by the grace of God that we have gathered here together, and it is also by the grace of God, most importantly, that we are saved. So let us sing about the grace of God. Let us sing, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. On the first verse, Ready, sing. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. This grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Genesis for our opening prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning once again that you've given to us. Thank you for this uh, new morning uh, na nandito kami, Panginoon, sa Bahay Samban, Panginoon. And as we continue the program, Lord, um, touch our hearts, Panginoon, to be committed Sa, sa missions, Panginoon, at naway um, give us the, the burden 
uh, to witness to people, Panginoon, sa aming uh, paligid. And Lord, um, I pray for the uh, preacher for this morning. Uh, use him, Lord, uh, to relay the message that you want to give us, uh, give to us, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to the choir. Let us all stand as we continue our praise to our God. Let us sing, I'll go where you want me to go. On the first verse, ready, sing. It may not be on the mountain's height or over the 
confirmation and direction from the Lord at that time. We visited orphanages and I had the chance to hold these beautiful Romanian babies. We did also feeding ministries and while doing this type of service, the Lord put tremendous burden for these children. I spoke into three churches and I noticed one thing, that not too many fathers are in the church. That makes me sad. The statistics reveal that when a child grows without the image of a father, they will either live in poverty, they will die in infancy, they will use drugs, they will drop out of school, they will end in jail, or be abused. On the other hand, when a child grows with the image of a father, they have better grades, they have better verbal skills, they have better physical health, and more confidence. Romania is one of the poorest countries in Eastern Europe. 
It has a population of 22 million and more than 600,000 are gypsies. 85% goes to Greek Orthodox Church and less than 1% are Baptists. So our plan of action once we go to Romania is that we will continue to be part of this feeding program while learning their language and culture. And after two years, we're going to start a church. We're going to start Bible studies that meet into different places and we're going to reach, especially the men, help them to, begin the, to become the leaders that God wants them to be. As the Lord prosper it, we're going to start a mission conference after five years. So please pray for us. We believe together we can reach the world. We love you. Hope to see you. God bless you all. Bye. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Missioner Hausaka, your missioner to Myanmar. My wife's name is Lim Zouting. And the Lord bless us with four children, three boys and a girl. My eldest son is Samuel. My second son is David. My third son is Joshua. And my daughter's name is Ruth. And I have been in the mission field since March 2008. And the Lord blessed the mission work with souls being saved, disciple, and learning to involve in mission and plan house churches in Yangon and beyond. And thank you so much for your prayers and support. And it is our prayer and desire to plan more house churches in every town of Yangon and beyond. So we need your prayer and continuous support. And I hope and pray that you can visit us and see the mission world someday. Thank you very much. And it's continue to pray for souls to be safe, for more laborers to Myanmar, and for the spiritual growth of our church members. And let me read to you that the great plan and desire of God found in Acts 1 8. Tendo poro tan shin the wing in the sinte do a ka, tendo di tabu ku ka ya yu, Jerusalem mi ma sa yu, Yuda mi shamari pi mi jisun da yong a ite ti mi a picha le me ho ming da mo i. We need to continue serving the Lord and let us not get discouraged but keep on serving the Lord. Thank you so much once again for your partnership. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Good morning and happy Lord's Day. So, what a week that we have and uh, but in spite of that, we thank God for, the, for His sustaining grace in sustaining us through the storms that we have just passed. First, we have Rolly, and at the heels of that, we have, uh, we have this Ulysses. So, uh, and this is an opportunity for us to, to be of help to our fellow believers and fellow, uh, fellow workers in the Lord. And most important thing that we have to remember that is going on this week as we celebrate our missions, missions month. We have a long history actually of missions conferences and missions month. It started in April 1967. Uh, April 1967 and that was, a, that was way too long. I remember that because my sister was born right during this, this mission conference and she was named Faith. Uh, faith, faith, joy, Rukinho. So uh, it was in 1967 that we have, and we have been consistently supporting missions from that point on, even though we have mission program before that. So because of that, we would like to, we would like to remind everyone of our missions commitment. Uh, this is what we could do. We could uh, do this online. If you could have, if you could just fill out those forms that we have, we have, we have the, uh, their Google Forms or whatever form is that, and then just uh, put your missions commitment either weekly or 
uh, weekly or monthly uh, so that we would be able to support our missions and we would be able to have an idea of how much the, we are supporting while we are continuously uh, giving to our faith promise uh, program in our church. So let's pray uh, for whatever uh, amount that the Lord laid on our heart uh, of how much we could give to these missions conferences. Now also, while we have that missions commitment, Let's also remember our fellow countrymen, not just fellow believers, fellow countrymen and church members that were affected by Typhoon Ulysses and fellow believers from other churches. So other churches are ministering to those people who are affected and be called. At the hills of two storms, the main, uh, at Typhoon Rolly, many houses were devastated and Typhoon Ulysses uh, they were also greatly uh, impacted by the floods that happened. So, according to the according to the uh, people there, they they still don't have uh, power. Some of them are have much power, and it's very in some areas it's very difficult to send money. But they can. Uh, but you can send money. But you have to uh, line uh, line up at the at. Lulier, uh, Palawan, and other and other agencies that do this, this transaction. So, uh, please pray, especially for Pastor Phil Birto David. Uh, as we remember, he was flooded. He, uh, his his place was flooded, and we have no contact yet. But we have received an information before that that he had just experienced this flooding. So. Uh, if you want to donate uh, to Pastor Philbert and other missionaries and other fellow members, you may contact Sister uh, Bibet Aris if, uh, if that were either would be in cash or in kind so that we would be able to help our fellow pastors while at the same time we are praying for them. So if, we have, uh, if you remember of anyone, if you know of anyone, or any of our members uh, who was affected by the flood, uh, please tell us. And I appreciate our church members who have uh, done extra effort to reach out to these people who have been um, flooded there in Marikina area. And please continue to uh, pray for these people. And I'll, a help that we can extend to them is a great comfort and a blessing to them. So that's, that takes care of all of our announcement. And may I request for any uh, first timer, if this is your first time to visit Baptist Bible Church, please indicate so by raising your hand. Sino po dito ang ngayon lamang po nakabisit sa uh, Baptist Bible Church? Pakitas lamang po ng inyong kamay and then okay, so uh, our ushers will get to you to give you a pack. Sino pa po ang, ang first time dito nakabisit? Meron pa po ba? Okay, welcome sa uh, Baptist Bible Church, and may I ask Brother Irvin to please come and lead us in our welcome song. As we welcome each other, let us all stand. Uh, we cannot shake each other's hand, but we can greet each other and make each other welcome by waving, saluting, or ano man ang, uh, Pwede nating ipakita. Let's make each other feel welcome and let's be happy that we are able to gather once again as a church for a very long time. Let's sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Please be seated as we have a special number.
We are blessed to have our speaker uh, today. This is not the first time he had been our speaker in our, in our church. And we can still remember, for some of you, uh, the time that uh, we have supported him for our missions, for as our uh, mission-supported missionaries. We are very blessed to have him in our church. Uh, and our speaker ha has graduated uh, 1984 in, Cebu in Baptist Bible Church, uh, Baptist Bible College in Katipunan, Cebu. And he has been uh, working uh, in missions field uh, in China since, 2000, uh, 2000, since the year 2000. So I remember distinctly that there was a time that we have especially prayed for for our missionary, for missionary Peter De Jesus, when 
uh, there, he had a severe health problem that only a miracle could really uh, cure him. And indeed, God's miracle uh, happened. Many of the churches have been praying for him, including our church who have consistently praying for him. And it was on 2017, and to my delight, he visited our church, and we were pleasantly surprised to have him standing right before us. And he was really indeed a miracle of God's sustaining grace and God's and as answer to our prayer. And he will tell you what happened to the, to the ministries that we, ha that we have, but we are happy to have his family visit with us, uh, uh, Sister De Jesus and the children. Uh, would you please stand? Okay, and we have also a visitor with, with him. And it's now our delight to have our uh, pastor, uh, Peter De Jesus, speak for us today. And let's welcome, welcome him with a hearty amen. Thank you, sir. Dennis, good morning to everyone. I think we have two video presentations that uh, I believe the church needs also to, to see. The first one is about our report in China recently. And uh, the second video presentation is about our new field. And I will talk more about it as lo uh, uh, along as I will be preaching. Let's have the video, please. Thank you. Thank you. 
Shall we all stand, please? As I would like to invite you this morning to turn our Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number four. Mark, chapter number four. I would take this opportunity to greet your pastor online. Pastor Boyd Lyons, good morning. We have been always praying for you. And, uh, you have always been our example and an encouragement. Continue to pray for Pastor Lyons. And as I see your pastor, it always reminds me of a great commitment. Amen? A great commitment. And I will talk more about commitment as well. Shall we all pray before we go to the Word of God? Our gracious and loving Father, we praise and thank you that even though this pandemic would limit our movement and even Lord would, would restrict some of our normal, uh, uh, usual things that we used to do before, but we thank you, Father, that in the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, that we can still speak of your Word and praise your name and serve you, Father, even at this moment of time that we could be gathered together, Lord, and hear your word. Please encourage each one of us. Build us up together by your spirit through your word this morning. I pray for Pastor Boyd Lyons here and for his physical health. Continue, Lord, to sustain him. Continue, Lord, to, to, to uh, protect him. And thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy to this church. It has been uh, uh, a great encouragement and a great help Lord, this church has been to, to many missions already around the world, especially, Lord, to the work there that you have entrusted to, to us in China and this, and this new field in Bolivia. Father, we praise and thank you for how great thou art, we, and you're so faithful. May your Holy Spirit, Father, open our hearts this morning, and may we ask the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to purify our hearts and cleanse our thoughts from anything, Lord, that would prevent us from understanding the word this morning. May you be with us even, Lord, in our hearts as we listen to your word. In Jesus' wonderful name, this I pray. Please remain standing and let us 
Again, go to Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. Let's read this together, please, if you may. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Allow me to repeat this. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Please be seated. Thank you. If you don't mind, I just remove this face shield because it, it aches my head. <laughs> uh, you're 20 meters away from me, so no problem. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I, I'm so happy to see each one of you this morning. It has been three years ago that, was, uh, that, that I came over here that your pastor invited me to share uh, the work over there in China. And uh, we praise the Lord that uh, the Lord has been uh, true to His promises and true to His word. This year of June 23rd, we will raid it. Our rented house, which is also our office as a business company, was raided. 14 members of the National Security Bureau, which is equivalent to FBI in the U.S., came over. Some of them were in plain clothes, some of them were in uniform, police uniform, and they served me a search warrant. Guess, ano po ba ang feeling ko the time o my wife? But the sweet spirit of the Lord just reminds us, reminded me from Matthew chapter 24. Jesus said, when you will be brought to magistrates, before magistrates, do not think what you would say, for the Spirit will put the right words in your lips. And with that reminder, I ask the Lord to put the right words in our lips. And we were segregated. My wife was, was, was placed in uh, what was questioned in another room in our house, and I was in the living room. And... Uh, questioned also for eight long hours we were under interrogation to make a long story short they saw lots of evidences and they got our computers and you know looked over it for for a week or so and finally after a month they came back and they asked us to cooperate they said without my passport for one month and they came back and they give uh, give me my passport. They gave me my, my, my passport and they remind and they asked me if I would be willing to cooperate Because if I would cooperate then I could continue staying in China and What were the conditions? One of those conditions I have to give them a list of our members and their addresses and their phone numbers and another condition was I had to give a list of our supporting churches and another condition is that I would also have to uh, inform them, the foreigner friends that I have and the other foreign missionaries in China. And they gave me one week to decide. What do you think would my decision be? Friend relationship, it pertains to anything that... that, that, that uh, uh, intervenes between you and God. Be ye not an equally yoke. That's is just the key verse of the entire uh, account of what happened in chapter 4 and 5. Okay? Now, let me give you an introduction of this chapter. Jesus had been teaching parables in his ministry. He has been teaching people by way of teaching them parables or telling them the kingdom of heaven through parables. And if you notice in chapter 4, he had been teaching about the kingdom of heaven through parables that would always profoundly tell us that how important missions for the Lord is in his heart. He talked about the parable of a sower. Amen? What is to sow? To plant seeds. To spread the word of God. Amen? And what else did he talk about? He talked about your light 
You should not put it under a bushel and keep it from others to see. Why? Because the heart of God in Jesus Christ would speak to us that His intention of coming is seeking the lost and that is His mission. Amen? And before Jesus Christ went back to heaven, before He ascended back to heaven, He gave us a very important statement, a very important testament, I would say, because that was after His death. And after His resurrection, of course, praise the Lord, He resurrected from the dead. And that only proves us, as He said, that I will raise from the dead. It's not by anything that Christ was risen from the dead, but it is owned by His power in God, amen, that He rose from the dead. And He said, so send I you. Reaching the world was the mission of Christ. And he gives this mission, now we know is as commission to the church, to Santa Mesa Bible Baptist Church. And he is saying now, so send I you Santa Mesa Bible Baptist Church. And that's why your theme this month every Sunday for your mission Sunday is reach the world. When the Lord gives commission, when co the Lord commissions His people, what does He demand from us? Come on, what does He demand from us? Obedience. And what is with obedience? Commitment to obey. And I've heard that this coming Sunday, it is your commitment giving Sunday that you would be uh, giving your commitment to missions. And I will be, uh, the Lord has led me to emphasize on, 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 on this uh, account because it is very profound that we see obedience and commitment in this account. Uh, uh, account in, 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 in this passage in Mark chapter 4 and 5. Now, after Jesus Christ teaching the multitude, you notice, okay, you notice in chapter 4, at the, at the last part of verses, at the last verses of chapter 4, Jesus was dispersing the multitude and he said to his disciples, especially to the twelve, let us pass to the over to the other side. What an important message. What an important statement. After all things were said and done, Jesus now said to his disciples, let us pass over onto the other side. Reaching the world is obeying the Lord and it involves crossing, passing over to the other side. Amen? Well, for eight months, seven months, eight months already in the Philippines, in China it only took us two or three months. We were only locked down in, in Kunming City. We were only locked down. I'm sorry, I don't have this. Okay. I... <laughs> Uh, we were locked down for only three, two, three months. And uh, we only had a, we did not meet actually for 10 Sundays. But after, after that, we met, of course, with uh, mask, though, though it was not yet publicly allowed. You know, eh, mahuli ka man, underground ka, okay lang. Kahit mahuli ka, nag-violate na, wala, everything. Everything involves risk, but God has been protecting us anyway. And continue to pray for the work in China. The work is still ongoing. And, and praise the Lord that the, the Christians there are faithful to the word of God. And so this is what reaching the world involves. Crossing, passing over to the other side. When you reach something... Many times, your body has to cross over something. 
right? When you reach out to something, you have to pass over another thing. Are you following? Because it is reaching to the lost world. Many times we need to pass over some crisis, some storms, some waters. Through the waters, through the fire, Jesus said, I will be with you. And lo, I am with you always. And here's what happened. When they began to move in the sea, in the waters of the Sea of Galilee, in the middle of their journey, suddenly there was this storm, right? And Jesus was just lying down on a pillow. He was asleep, fast asleep, tired. He was in his physical human being. Now, the disciples began to worry, began to uh, frantically cry and said, Master, do you not care that we perish? So many times, especially this pandemic, we have lots of questions to God. We question God many, 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 many things and many, many times. You know what? As He is our Creator, as He is our Father, through Jesus Christ, we don't have any right to question why. He has all the right to question why. Amen? I heard over the online service last Sunday, from this church, the speaker was this American missionary. I'm sorry, I, I could not remember his name. And he talked about Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, right? The conversion of Apostle Paul. And remember that story, remember that event, the testimony of Apostle Paul. Okay? Remember that uh, uh, testimony of Apostle Paul, that uh, God chose Apostle Paul. Because God has a plan for Apostle Paul. And so in this, in this event, the disciples had to cross over to the other side and there was this storm. Pandemic is like a storm. As we follow the Lord, as we obey His command, along the way, in our Christian life's journey, there could be storms. Maybe just like Ulysses. Maybe just like Rolly. Please continue to pray for the, uh, uh, our, our brothers and sisters and churches affected by these typhoons. You know, there are not accidents. God has a special purpose. It is probably God is telling us, let us pass over to the other side. And passing over many times would allow us to go through some storms in life. And we, if we don't have commitment, if we don't have faith, it's very difficult to fulfill what God has commanded us. Because a lot of times, probably without faith, then we easily faint, we easily depress, we easily be depressed, and we easily quit and go back to the old ways. What happened? Jesus calmed the storm. He rebuked the storm, and there was calm. There was no more storm. And Jesus asked them, why you did not have faith. Amen. It is God asking us why. God asked Saul of Tarsus, why are you persecuting me? What should be our question to God is, what, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. During this pandemic, do not ask God why. Ask God what, Lord? Let us pass over to the other side, God is saying. Amen? So your commitment, obedience to God is part of passing over, reaching the world. Going over to the other side. 
Faith is indispensable in reaching the world. Now, make it clear, and I, I'm about to close with this. Why did Jesus ask the disciples to go over to the other side of the sea? If you look at chapter 5, you will see there a man possessed with demons. Just one person. Well, in another gospel, it talked about two persons, demon possessed, but it doesn't really matter whether one or two, but the truth and the matter of, uh, and the, the truth of the matter is that there is one possessed demons, very strong, probably stronger than the other man possessed with demons in another gospel. Now, in Mark chapter 5, this man possessed with demons was bounded and he just broke the iron made chains and nobody could control him and he bit his uh, and, and he just uh, wound his body and just make a lot of uh, pains for his body. You know, it's, it's a picture of an unbeliever. It's a picture of us sinners. Before we knew the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, we were like this man possessed with devil, that we could not control our, 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 our being from sin. It's only by the power of Christ that we can overcome sin in our lives. Amen. And now we have Jesus Christ as our Savior. We can overcome because he already released us and freed us from the bondage of sin. Always remember that. And what happened here? The demons talked to Jesus and bargained with Jesus, negotiated with Jesus. They said, first, Jesus asked him, what is your name? What, are you, what is your name? And the demons answered, Legion, so many of us, so many of us, Legion. And they asked Jesus, please, please do not hurt us. Allow us to go to, to a herd of swine. And Jesus allowed it. Why? Swine do not have souls. Jesus did not come to seek swine, but he came to seek souls. Amen? Amen? Now, and the swine, 2,000 of them, leaped over and jumped into the cliff and, of course, died. And the owners of the swine were so afraid, were so worried, and were so shocked that they told the people in the next towns and, and the surrounding towns and what happened then. And people began to, to come to, uh, to see Jesus and this man that he healed. And they saw this man change in his attire, in his clothing now, with a sound mind. But here's one important statement that they made. Jesus, depart. You hurt our business. You know, reaching the world is obeying the Lord always accompanies opposition from the world. No, mag-isip tayo. Christ is reaching you as a lost person, but you don't want it. Don't reach me. My religion can help me. Don't try to reach me. I can do it myself. And some believers have that kind of mentality. Don't preach to me, Pastor Boyd. I know I'm old enough. Don't talk to me, Brother Dennis, like that. I was nauna pa ko sa duyan sa'yo. You know, very natural person, sinful nature. Tayo ganyan, madalas. Right? Pagpagalitan tayo, pag, pag na-preach ang word ng Panginoon sa atin, ay hindi tayo masaya nagagalit pa tayo. Reaching the world always accompanies opposition from the world. They kick at us from China and one team leader, 
He said, who sent you? I said, God. He raised his voice. He said, Chechongo Mayo, Shen, Mayo Shangdi. In China, there is no God. Opposition is always, always in the way. Amen. And if you don't have commitment, and opposition can be in any form, problems in your life, economic crisis, typhoons, a lot of things that try to discourage us from following the Lord, reaching the world. Why I say is obeying the Lord because a lot of challenges in trying to reach the world. I'm already 56 years old, praise the Lord. But a lot of you are still older than me. <laughs> I'm already 56 years old. I told my wife jokingly, I said, oh, now we're out of China, so we can just go fishing. <laughs> no. Praise the Lord by the grace of God. He has given us a commitment to serve him until we die or until he returns. There's no quitting in the ministry. As I see Pastor Boyd Lyons, what a great encouragement to my life. Personally, I would say this. Dr. Lyons, thank you very much for setting a good example, especially for us young generation of missionaries. And I would tell you, church, you have a great pastor. If you obey your pastor, you're obeying God. And the church is trying to set up this theme, reach the world. And if you go behind your pastor, supporting your pastor, then you are obeying the Lord in reaching the world. Amen. Though in passing over to the other side, there are storms, there are crises, but don't worry, Jesus is in the ship. Even though Jesus seemed to be sleeping, even though you seem, you think God is not hearing your prayers, even though you don't feel that God is with the ministry, continue. Amen. Where is your faith? God would ask you if you quit. God would ask you if you don't do your commitment. Where is your faith? Your commitment to missions this year is like going over to the other side. Last year was another commitment, and that's history. Let us go over to that other side. If last year you committed 100 pesos, I hope you have committed a higher amount. That is like going over to the other side, more challenging side. There's only one soul over on the other side, but it was a great challenge that only Christ can do the work. Remember that. Only Christ can do the work. All missionaries are doing the work in the strength of the Lord. Your pastor is doing the work in the strength of the Lord. Brother Dennis, I'm sure, is doing the, Lord's, the, the, uh, the work of the Lord in the Lord's strength. And every one of you faithful in doing the service of the Lord is doing in the Lord's strength. And that is ought to be uh, so. Why? Without the strength of the Lord, we can never do anything. We can never please God. And that is why every Christian is to live by faith from salvation to glorification. We are to live by faith from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Amen. And it is very important. Let me close with this. Hudson Taylor once said, No, Hudson Taylor, a great missionary in China in the 1800. He said, God's commission to the church is not an option to be considered, but a command to be obeyed. My late missionary pastor, Bob Hughes, once said, Why? Wait for a call when there is a command. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Father, 
Your word is enough. It is truth. It is pure. It is holy. And it is power. May your Holy Spirit right now work in our midst, Father. That you will be done in everyone's life, especially, Lord, in this church's life. I pray, Father, that may you, again, one more time, soften our hearts. That even, Lord, with this message reaching the world is obeying the Lord. May we always, Father, be found faithful in our commitment, in our obedience to your word. I pray for anyone here right now who may have not known you yet personally as Savior. Father, I pray that may you convict their hearts that they would admit and acknowledge, Father, that you came in the person of Jesus Christ to save them, to die on the cross for their salvation. I pray even, Father, that may you again continue to empower this church, enable them, Lord. As the invitation is going on, may I ask uh, Pastor Dennis, please, to come. Shall we all stand up as we continue with the invitation? I don't know if the, in, in what way the Lord has spoken to your heart. If it be in need of a Savior, remember that the one who, whom, of whom we are preaching about is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God. He's God's only begotten Son. God Himself. He's Jetty. And God the Father sent him to be our Savior by taking on humanity, by becoming like one of us, by suffering the penalty there on the cross, and by his perfect life and by his sacrificial death, and by his resurrection, he has secured salvation for those who would believe. And if the Lord had spoken to your heart in, uh, with regards to your need of a Savior, I urge you to come today to come to Him by receiving Him as your Savior and Lord. Is there anyone with those who are watching online and with anyone who might be present today who still is unsaved? Would you receive Him as your Lord and Savior? And for us who have put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, God is calling us to be involved in reaching out the world with the gospel of Christ. And if the Lord has spoken to you with regards to praying, of, of which we must always all do, by giving and going, we ask you, to respond to him as God is calling you to do so. And if the Lord, has, if you are already saved and if the, Lord, the Lord has spoken unto you with regards to baptism, you are saved and you are not yet baptized, why not come to him and obey in matters of baptism? Is there one today? And if the Lord has spoken to you with regards to Going to the ministry, why not consider Asia Baptist Bible College to enroll in? This one who came forward, is there any other is there any other who would come? we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the challenge that we have received. Thank you, God, for his life. Thank you, God, for protecting him while they were there. And Lord, thank you for their labors. I pray, God, for those who were there in China, the ones whom he, whom he have been, 
you have trained. I pray, God, that you would continue to use them, protect them, and by your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, I pray that you would bless their efforts, that they would be able to reach kindness to the Lord with the gospel of Christ. And, O oh God, I pray for the ones who are, who are here. I pray, O oh God, that may we continue to obey you in whatever ways, O oh Lord, that you have uh, dealt with us. And I pray, O oh God, that uh, you would that you would bless us all in the way uh, and use us, O oh God, in whatever intention you would like us so, to be by your grace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing. And again, may I remind you as we take our offering to please continue um, supporting our faith promise and also our uh, our missions program. And if you have any one of those uh, slips, uh, uh, please take them home and pray for whatever amount God leads your heart to give uh, to our missions giving. Or, and if you are watching online and you want to contribute, just refer to our, our Facebook page and it will give you instruction to the form by which you could fill in uh, for our uh, missions giving. So, uh, may I also remind you that if you would like to uh, give to, to those who have been victims of the of Typhoon Ulysses, uh, please indicate so. And if you would like to give to pas to the pastors, in, uh, to Pastor Philbert to the bleep, David, uh, he needs our prayer, he needs our financial support, uh, please uh, indicate so also. And you can also give, uh, you, if you have no money right now, you can, you can give later. To Sister Bebet, uh, please contact Sister Bebet. And if you would also like to give in in kind, uh, please uh, give that to our office. Um, may I ask at this time, Brother David, Brother David, please come and uh, pray for our offering. Let us all bow down our heads in prayer. O oh Lord God and Heavenly Father, today we acknowledge your presence, Lord, in the midst of this crowd and congregation. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our eternal salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the powerful message that has been brought to us by the powerful preacher. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the, another great day and opportunity to honor you and worship you despite of calamities, despite of problems, despite of pain, struggles in our life. You are a great God and powerful God who is in control of everything. Lord, we acknowledge everything to your mighty hand, even our giving. May you be the one to honor, may you be the one to be praised in every detail of our life. Lord, we pray also, Lord, for those people, particularly in those areas that are devastated ng, ng typhoon. We acknowledge your mighty hand that will be moved, and especially, Lord, sa mga finances na kinakailangan to provide each and every one. Alam po namin na napakahirap na aming sitwasyon. But you are a powerful God na gumagawa po, Panginoon, ng mga bagay miraculously to provide our need. We pray, O Lord, for the church especially our dear pastor, Lord, this time, continuously give him the great uh, strength, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, especially the family, Lord, and each and every one of us, na patuloy po kami na maglingkod, Panginoon, na naayon sa inyong kalooban. Bless niyo po, Panginoon, ang pagbibigay po na aming tithes and offering this morning. The mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior, Amen.
Good Sister Faith. Um, just a few reminders. Uh, please be back again this afternoon uh, as we will have our afternoon service. And also, for all young people, may I ask you to please uh, be, be involved in our Shaya. So, uh, by 2 o'clock, uh, uh, please log in to our, Zoom, uh, to our Zoom meeting so that you could be uh, blessed by the topic that we are going to have this afternoon in Shaya Fellowship. Shall we all stand up as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer as we close? May I ask uh, Brother Anthony to please come and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you today for a wonderful blessing that we have heard from your word. We continue to pray that you will be yourself to us through your word and encourages us. Father, our flesh always wants to be rebellion and we pray that you quicken our spirit so that we will be able to obey your command. Let us reach the world and preach your word to people who do not know you. Without you, we cannot go, and with you, we can do it. We know that what is impossible to us is possible to you. And as Christians, our hope and our faith is always in you, and we know that you will do it for us. Help us those who have been calling to be preach your word, Father, help them. And those who are also be committed to support the people who will reach, Father, or bless them and also help them. In this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord spare us a main, minute or two and we will have a picture taking with missionary uh, Peter Dessus and his family. Pwede naman mag-music, <laughs> hindi